welcome back to Satisfactory Update 4. Now, as you might be aware, uh, judging from the uh, number of uh, companion series episodes, uh, I have been spending quite some time uh, modifying and building on the factory since then. And uh, I had completely forgotten how much time things actually uh, take uh, when you need to, uh, to change um, things in Satisfactory. Uh, it's, um, it's definitely a time-consuming game, also highly enjoyable, but of course I, if I weren't such a, a stickler for having uh, my uh, production lines and belts being uh, all well aligned up, then uh, the time would probably be far less. Uh, but I enjoy building the factories the way that I build them, so uh, that's uh, probably not going to change. But with the streams and me uploading the streams as companion episodes to the series, uh, at least now everyone gets the chance to see nearly everything I do. There has been a couple of things that I did off camera, but... Uh, most of it has been done on stream. Now, if you're not um, following uh, my Twitch channel, I would be uh, very, very uh, honored if you uh, bothered to pop on over there and uh, click that follow button. Uh, that would be massively helpful. Um, I am definitely going to be uh, both streaming and making uh, video content uh, on YouTube uh, at the same time. I've found that streaming is very, very fun, so I'm quite, quite happy with my decision to start doing that as well. Uh, I need to pause the recording shortly because apparently my headset is not happy with the fact that uh, the battery is almost dead, so hold on just a couple of seconds, please. There we go. Okay, so... For those of you who are not interested in watching the companion series or watching the streams, I uh, want to do these episodes the way that I've done them uh, before, as I think I mentioned in the previous episode. Uh, there has been extensive stuff been that I've done since the last episode, but all of it has been old content, which is why I haven't really bothered uh, recording a new episode number three until now. Um, I'm still on the old content, um, but I need to do this old content to prepare for the content uh, that they added in now in update uh, 4, because some of my production lines were massively underproducing compared to what I actually need to, um, to get to, um, to the content that they have added. Uh, and as always, I'm a terrible driver, and it is a massive difficulty for me to fi figure out where the heck am I. Uh, the belt is down there, so uh, that seems to be the right spot. Uh, I discovered that I needed a lot more copper sheets than what I was using, and uh, that involved going out here and uh, tapping... Uh, a couple of uh, pure copper notes um, with uh, Mark II miners, now that I cannot produce Mark III miners anymore. I need to unlock that again. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to the part where I get the Mark III miners back, because uh, using Mark II miners, it, you can only get them to 600 parts per minute, and uh, that is not enough to saturate one full belt of 780 which is completely and utterly unacceptable, of course. Um, so I've built these uh, logically. Uh, that means I've actually used foundations. Oh, yay. The desert music? No, it's disappearing again. No, the desert music is... No, never mind. Uh, the other copper node is... Uh, somewhere over uh, there. Uh... These are the coal nodes that we tap for, uh, I think, for the uh, petroleum... No, not the petroleum coal, but for the compacted coal. Or it might be for the... Uh, I don't remember exactly what these are for. This is the other copper node. 
That's also pure. It's been clocked to the exact same speed as the other one. And uh, that number might seem a bit weird. As in... 216.6667. But 520 parts on each of the uh, the pure copper nodes I have here. That includes the copper node that was in the copper outpost. Uh, or copper smelting outpost over here already. Uh, just so you're aware of that. Uh, and the reason for that is that 5 times 520 uh, does add up to exactly enough to fill two belts of 780, so it should be 1560. Uh, in this outpost, we basically have uh, all of the three... Um, we have one coming in here, and the lift here is because I wanted to move it one level, and I didn't want to use uh, an inclination. Probably should start just using inclinations because I'm making stuff more complicated for myself. Uh, so this goes into uh, to this uh, merger here, um, and there's a merger from the other one as well. And the merger is connected up with a splitter in the middle, uh, where the one uh, copper node that I already had tapped uh, is connected up to. So this one is split evenly between the, these two others, and that provides two belts of 780. And on each of these we have two uh, autosave incoming, so we'll wait until that is done. Because that is certainly going to lose my count. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, so twenty-six smelters on each of these two smelting lines. And that is exactly enough to fill up uh, one uh, Mark V belt. 26 smelters of copper. Same applies to iron. Uh, I'm not sure if it applies to Caterium, but I think it does. No, it doesn't. Uh, and those belts, that, uh, that was a, an interesting challenge. Uh, I mean, out here it's fine, but it stops being fine the moment we get into the base, because... I decided, after looking at the recipes, that uh, why on earth am I using the regular uh, copper sheet recipe in the constructor when I can use the alternate recipe in the refinery, uh, which is the steamed copper sheets, which gives me so much more copper sheets uh, by just adding some water. And they have also added the ability to uh, uh, to snap the, uh, the water extractors now, uh, so that really helped. Um, but both of those copper belts are coming down here. That is copper ingot belts, and they're going through in there. But I'm not going to drive there because I'm going to hit every single power pole that is in there. And then we came to this part here, and that's where my challenges began. Uh, because, yes, the, the old belt's fine. That would be this belt. No problem. It was already connected up. It was admittedly a Mark III belt, and I haven't split it yet, so that's going to be uh, an interesting part as well. But... The new belt, that that decidedly created some issues for me, as I had to route it outside of this, um, I don't know, monstrosity that I have here. I mean, yeah, it's neat and tidy with straight angles, but uh, if there's one thing that this little exercise has taught me, it is that no matter how organized you build your belts, uh, you are going to end up with some fairly entangled situations where you are going to be, huh? How am I going to solve this? So that new belt of copper is going there, and then it's going over to there, and uh, on the top of that uh, bus that I'm having here, and I'm starting to wonder if um, parallel buses might be better than using uh, buses in height, because here I ran into the issue of... Uh, it's almost clipping into the ceiling. It doesn't, but I cannot build another belt on top of this because that is going to clip into the ceiling. So that is the final belt I can build. You can see that it's touching the, the beam up there. Um, and getting this out to the refinery area, that also posed some challenges of its own. Um, I mean, I, I, I take the belt down and I, I put it into this conveyor together with the uh, the iron that is going up to the production floors here in the base. 
Well, that's fine. Uh, th the issue was that the copper on this belt is going all the way out to the refinery. And for those of you who have been following this series for some time, you know that the refinery is uh, interesting when it comes to belts. You can also see that I had to do some uh, shenanigans here. Again, I should probably just start using lifts. Um, but uh, at one point here, I just caved in. So here we have an inclination. I I just couldn't be bothered. It was I would have to route the belt out and down and up and in again. And I was like, nope, not doing that. This is taking too much time as is. So the topmost belt here now is uh, the copper ingots that is sent out to the refinery. And then we came to this part here and I was like, oh god, this is just... This is not not, not going to be an easy task. Uh, not that I mind it. It's not that I'm meowing about this at all. Uh, there's the copper sheets, by the way. Um, it's part of the interesting puzzle of Satisfactory. Um, but I think that if I need to do more belt transportation of products in or out to the refinery, I'm going to add a second uh, line beside this one. And I'm not sure where I'm going to route it, but I'm going to route it well out of the way of this thing. So, yeah. Uh, then we have my contraption down here. Uh, this one works rather well, I think, uh, with the lifts taking everything down two levels. So that one is not too bad. Uh, and thankfully, in the uh, previous series that I did of this space in uh, Update 3, I had the foresight to route the uh, pipelines on a separate uh, conveyor uh, stack, uh, which I am deeply grateful for uh, at this point. Because if I had a pipe in there, that would really have made things bad. So the copper and the steam, uh, the copper or the steamed copper plates are the two topmost belts on uh, the the conveyor bus that you can see here. Uh, I had to do some shenanigans there as well. Um, and that here too is also somewhat of a monstrosity, I have to admit. Uh, the belt here is the uh, the copper sheets taking it back onto the bus. Uh, that isn't so bad, but the copper ingots I had to lift up and then down again uh, to get properly uh, into the um, segment of the base where I want it. Uh, now the uh, the actual refinery setup that 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 wasn't bad at all. It's basically just setting up the uh, 35 refineries that I needed for the uh, for the, uh, the the full belt saturation. Uh, set up the water extractors underneath here and uh, using a Mark II pipe. So uh, you can see there's uh, there's 35 refineries here now and all of them are making steamed uh, copper sheets, which is a fabulously good recipe. It gives you 22 and a half copper sheets for 22 and a half copper ingots and 22 and a half water per minute as compared to the default recipe in the constructor, which gives you 10 for 20. So there is a massive gain in uh, in using this recipe. And while copper isn't the most rare resource on the map, it's still worth it to, uh, to conserve it. Another recipe that also is worthwhile in that regards is the, uh, the pure copper ingot recipe, which is also made in the refineries, where you... Uh, take copper ore and water and uh, you get more ingots than you would from a regular smelter. The, uh, the water is a very simple regular thing uh, with, two, um, uh, with two water extractors facing one another and uh, with a new um, uh, snapping system and also their slight adjustment to the um, the pipe outlets from the water extractors, you actually get nice and straight angled pipes. So 
I'm not sure this is really uh, a major thing to show, but uh, since I'm here anyways, I might as well just show it because it's a quick and, uh, and uh, easy thing to show you guys. I have the ladder there that takes me up. But yeah, I have a pump. I have two water extractors. I have a neat and tight setup here where things are almost but not completely symmetrical because the distance of that one is a little bit longer but it works and I have the same setup over there and those pipes that go up they merge with one another uh, after refinery number 20 and uh, there is no valves so uh, the water will go both ways and thus saturate uh, the refineries uh, which need 780 water. Oh, oh, yeah, the uh, the water extractors are, of course, overclocked. Uh, I don't remember exactly to what, so I have to run over and check that. Uh, but yes, they are overclocked because that is also a necessity if you just want to use uh, four of them instead of using a lot more. 166.667%, 6, so uh, 200 per minute. Which means that I am producing 800 water, which is a little bit more than I need since I need 780. But I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit more so that water would not be um, uh, bottleneck uh, in case of uh, bottlenecking happening. Uh, okay, so uh, from there we will head back to the uh, to the main base area uh, and I will quickly show no actually we will go to the uh, to the um, Titan forest I think the name of the area is uh, where we have the uh, quartz outpost that was formerly producing um, silica for the aluminium refining in the old aluminium refinery setup. Uh, now that I am using the new recipes and also the new alternate recipes, I no longer need that silica for the aluminium refinery. So the silica will be going to something completely different. And uh, we'll get back to that as we get to it. However, as we pass this area i will warn you about something i don't think they've patched that if you go into this cave you will fall down and uh, your belongings will be left here because they have uh, apparently borked this cave so it's a hole in the world now instead of a, a cave going down to a i don't remember if it's a mercer sphere or if it's one of those uh Somer slopes but it's it's one of them so don't enter that cave unless you have a jetpack. Um, not that I know why you would want to enter that cave since the thing you find in there is not really usable yet anyways. And I expect that they will fix the cave before uh, they uh, release patch 1.0. Which is when uh, they are going to implement use for those um, Somer Slopes and uh, Mercer Spheres. So... I probably could have shown off the quartz outpost uh, at the beginning of the episode. First, I have to drive over myself. But I wanted to show this in the order that I've actually done it. So, Titan Forest, quartz. What I did out there, you will have to uh, uh, forgive me for the squiggly train uh, or rail. Uh, I can't build the uh, the uh, switches on uh, on the uh, foundation uh, seams, as I've mentioned before. I have no idea why they uh, why that was introduced. If it's a bug or a feature, or if it's actually supposed to be that way, no idea. But that means I get squiggly belts because I built the train stations in at the middle of uh, the. Uh, uh, foundations on the uh, with the track in the middle so yeah I just have to live with the squiggly squiggly rails it's not a big issue though. Uh, I'm not going to rebuild the entire train station section because of that 
So what I did out here is I tore down everything, except, well, actually I tore down everything, including the miners. And I rebuilt the miners, and I built some more uh, foundations, and I moved the entire production over there, instead of having it here. All of the miners are overclocked to 130%, which produce 156 parts per minute each. Now, number-wise, 156 parts per minute each means that I'm producing uh, a grand total of 468 raw quartz. Now, as soon as I get Mark III miners, I can replace these because then I can have each miner produce 312 instead. Uh, which means I can set up an additional line here of silica production. But... Uh, 468 is what is required to make uh, a full belt of 780 silica per minute. As you can see, it takes 22.5. Now, I have 21, I believe. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, yes. Because I, you, you need to have a final one set to 80% so that you get the uh, because 20 of them produce 750 and then you need another 30 to fill up the line um, then I'm just taking that silica out and down onto the old belt that was already there and then transporting the silica back to the base wait that's new they've added a collision with the train well, it didn't kill me, which is good, but I did not expect to be pushed by the train. That That's new. Maybe they will add signals at some point. Maybe they will add tra train collisions. Well, that would be an interesting thing. Now... The big question you might be uh, asking yourselves is why on earth were you producing all of these copper sheets and all of that silica? And the answer to that is circuit boards. As you know, if you've been uh, following the series uh, previously, um, if you don't, then I will inform you now anyways. I have been using the crystal computer recipe. The crystal computer recipe is a recipe that I like very much, especially at the uh, early stage of the uh, production cycle when you don't really need that many computers. Because you can basically set up uh, six manufacturers making um, crystal oscillators and then you can just set up two facilities uh, assemblers making computers in assemblers instead of making them in manufacturers and that's all nice and fine but at some point and this update 4 definitely added to that uh, you get a need for more computers than what you can produce from uh, from that setup and crystal oscillators are among the most painful things to set up in the game uh, because of the lack of uh, quartz um, and the uh, low production rate of the oscillators themselves without the alternate recipe each of them produce one per minute and as you can see each of these use 2.813 crystal oscillators per minute to produce 2.813 computers. Now what I could have done here is overclock these to, to produce three per minute. Um, that would increase the requirement for circuit boards to, uh, I think that would be eight per minute. I suppose I could just do that, uh, but I'm going to remove this uh, setup anyways. So I'm fine with the numbers the way they are. I have a full uh, storage box of computers here anyways so when it comes to computers I'm fine for the time being but I'm not using the computers in any assembly line yet and that's where my problem arrives so 
from the train station, I have two belts of silica, and I'm only going to use one of them because I have actually set up the silica outpost so that there's two uh, freight platforms uh, that is loading the train with silica. And the plan is to maybe even go up to four because I think we're going to need a lot of silica. Then we have a full belt of copper sheets here coming from the refinery. And in the regular assembler, you have several recipes for circuit boards uh, the basic one it's not that bad 15 copper sheets and 30 plastic but if you can avoid using plastic yes i would definitely recommend that the other recipe would be electrode circuit boards which take rubber and for some bizarre reason petroleum coke this one is probably the worst of the lot um let me just have a look at the um the um, uh, analysis electrode circuit board this is rated at tier d which means that yes it is indeed the worst of the lot now you also have the caterium circuit board this one isn't so bad because you get um you get uh, a decent uh, relative productivity uh, when it's weighted and you reduce one step, so you just need plastic and quick wire. That's that's nice compared to uh, to this one. But the best recipe, which is rated S tier recipe, is this one. And this one takes 27 and a half copper sheets per minute, 27 and a half silica per minute, and it outputs 12.5 circuit boards per minute when not overclocked. And that's definitely better than the output of the basic recipe. Uh, the relative weighted production of the uh, silicon circuit board is 179.50% compared to the uh, to the um, uh, basic recipe, and uh, it's uh, definitely a lot better in that regards. However, when you're using the uh, refinery recipe for making the um, the copper sheets. You are using a lot more real estate in terms of space but personally i do not think that is an issue whatsoever so uh, you uh, you shouldn't be worried about doing that and hence here is the circuit board production line we have uh, i don't remember the exact number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so 34 plus 1, and I need to find the clock speed of that one. Uh, I think it is 66%, uh, that is 66.6666%, but I'm not entirely sure, so I need to, uh, to look at that when we have uh, connected things up. And... Um, this is uh, the uh, result of a lot of labor that I've done. Now, the next step after I've set up this specific production line, uh, which will give me... Uh, let's see here. Um, I had the calculations. But I have to do them over again. 780 divided by 27.5 is 28.36. I'm not sure if I did the math correctly here then. I should recheck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. No, I might have done it wrong then. It should be 28. If each of these take... Okay, so I have to redo this slightly then. Because I need 14 on each side and then 1. That is clocked to 36.36, 36, 36, I believe. And... That will output uh, 
354 circuit boards per minute. With 354 circuit boards per minute, um, if we go to the manufacturer and we look at the computer recipes and we take a look at the Caterium computer recipe. The Caterium computer recipe is also rated S. It is one of the best recipes in the game. It saves you one step, but it does require a fair bit of quick wire. But as you can see, this one requires 26.25 circuit boards per minute, which means that the setup that I have behind me now is able to support uh, 26.25, 13 and a half manufacturer. Of course, that will require two belts of quickwire because that means I need 1,365, uh, 70, something around there. And it will also make a, a fair little dent into our rubber production, but I'm producing 1,200 rubber in the refinery and I'm not using a single one of it anywhere in the factory, so I guess it's time I started using some of those old products. Now, 13.5 of uh, these will produce a total of 50.64 computers per minute and that should keep us going in terms of computers for quite some time as you can see the supercomputer recipe this is the classic one because i haven't unlocked the tier 8 one yet uh it takes 3.75 per minute which is quite handy if you look at the uh the uh, output rate here but of course the supercomputer will always also require AI limiters high-speed connectors and plastic but I also need to use plastic I'm producing 1200 of that too which is not being used um, but the main reason why we need to produce these computers is because I need radio control units um, and I think this one is the classic one I'm not sure let me see if this is the classic one. No, this is not the classic one because it's using aluminium casing. I don't know if this is a better recipe or not. The fact that it requires less crystal oscillators. It doesn't. It requires more crystal oscillators in the basic recipe. But it outputs two more per minute. But I don't like that it adds rubber. I'll have to do some uh, some math on that. Because I'm not sure if that is a good trade-off. Uh, the aluminium casings, that is not a problem whatsoever, considering how many we're producing of those. So that's, that's uh, a trifle. Uh, but what I am worried about is 15 circuit boards per minute. This doesn't take computers at all. It replaces the computers with circuit boards and rubber, basically. I'm not sure if that's a good trade-off. Um, no, it replaces the computers, not the oscillators. It replaces the computers with circuit board and rubber. Uh, so you skip a step. Um, and it produces more. But one thing that is a very important thing to be said about the alternate recipes is that they don't necessarily always mean that you get more efficient um, output. Some recipes, definitely, you get more efficient output, but it isn't always the case. So even if a recipe that is alternate gives you more output, you have to look carefully at the input as well. Now the other thing is we're using the basic recipe for crystal oscillators currently which is taking quartz crystal uh, cable and reinforced iron plate and I'm wondering if I should switch that to the insulated one uh, which will take AI limiters and rubber instead of uh, cable and reinforced iron plates uh, this one is 18 per minute and outputs one per minute whereas this one is 18 and 18.75 per minute and then it takes some AI limiters and rubber but if I, uh, if I overclock this and set it to a target of 2 per minute, uh, I would have to insert the, uh, 
stuffs it needs. Uh, let's split this stack down to four. And we can insert these. And we can split this stack down to 25. You right click to uh, to split, by the way. And I also need some quartz crystals, so I need to run over to the uh, manufacturers that are using quartz crystals. That is, that is this is actually a, a... I wish that Coffee Stain added the option that those numbers update without having to, to add power. Because having to add power is a bit, uh, I don't know, redundant. It feels very redundant. It would have been much easier for me to just be able to... Uh, where are the power poles? To just see that on the fly without having to refer to a calculator. Because I know there are calculators online that do give me uh, those numbers. That is the wrong power pole. Uh, remove that. Or add that. Remove that. Then connect that to there. Connect that to there. Let's just drag a power pole out here. Doesn't really matter where. Then we connect that to there. Did you see it doesn't update the numbers until I now insert these. And I that doesn't make sense to me why it does that. Um, but these numbers are much easier to operate with. So I would require two AI limiters per minute. 14 rubber per minute and 20 quartz crystal per minute and I would make two quartz uh, crystal oscillators per minute. Uh, now AI limiters is also one of the things that I need to automate. Uh, just wait for that incoming autosave. But they are really not that hard to make. Uh, I think they're made in an assembler. And they take 25 copper sheets and uh, 20 quick wire. Uh, the 25 copper sheets, that means that I need more refineries making copper sheets. Um, but I'm wondering if I should just... Because I have a belt of copper uh, going in underneath here. Uh, let's quickly go down and have a look at that belt. Uh, it's uh, it's coming in over there and what I'm using that belt for is for these um, machines here and they are making uh, wire uh, and they are making wire for these machines over here because I've set these to make reinforced iron plates using the stitched iron plate recipe now, they are not receiving any iron iron plates because I have cut off that after I moved them all <laughs> And I haven't bothered to reconnect it. I think that I'm just going to tear down this entire part, to be honest. These ones are producing uh, the cable. And uh, all of this is redundant. If I uh, switch the recipe for the crystal oscillators to the alternate one, uh, these are the ones making circuit boards from copper sheets and silica. So I'm using the silicon circuit board down here, but everything down here is redundant. So what I'm wondering is if I can just take that belt and instead of bringing it in here, I could take it uh, underneath and I could take it out in that direction. Uh, and I could set up a refinery area because there is water down at the coastline there. And there's also a pure caterium node there. And I could just set up a, another full refinery of uh, 35 refineries using the uh, steamed copper sheet. The, the final refinery in that line is underclocked, by the way. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I'm not going to drive out there to check. Uh, we are nearing the end of the episode anyways. So I think that I'm going to do that because it's such a pain to get the copper out to the actual refinery that I have built out there. Um, that it would just be much easier for me to, to go out there. Now I should add that there is also um, uh, one of those resource wells in this direction, uh, which massively helps in terms of the Dune Desert, because one of the primary things about the Dune Desert that makes the Dune Desert interesting to build in, um, I mean, 
My primary challenge with the Dune Desert is the dunes. Um, there is ample resources here. Um, they've added a couple more hard drives on the top of the, uh, the mountains, so you're good on that as well. Most of the nodes out here, there's so many nodes out here that you're not going to have any issue with the nodes um, at all. Uh, I will I will show you before I um, before I uh, uh, end the recording. But the the dunes themselves create a massive challenge in terms of. I think that. You basically have to use foundations and you have to use an elevated base uh, in the Dune Desert. I would be very, very interested to see someone who has been building in the Dune Desert in this segment of the Dune Desert, not the, the southern segment, the savannah. That is more flat, but if someone has built a factory inside of this area here with all of the ups and downs on the dunes, then I would very much like to see that factory because that would be amazingly cool to watch um so there's a water resource well here and there are one two this one is impure so one two three four this one is normal so two pure three pure i think five six pure yeah okay five pure two impure and one normal and that would that should give a, a fair amount of water uh which would thus eliminate the need for getting water up from the uh the ocean which you can find over here but take care of that cave there if you're in this area it's easy to get up from it again because there's climbing vines there but yeah, the, the water you can get... Apparently not from down there. Uh, okay, so that's going to be interesting. I guess I would have to set up a refinery all the way down there. Though I already have the, uh, the conveyor uh, stacks to uh, transport stuff out here, so... It would basically just be a matter of adding, well, there's the lift there, but that lift is fine because I can just add a lift in front of it. Uh, the same with that one over there. Um, but yeah, the, these, um, oh, that's uranium rock. These dunes and all of the uh, ups and downs and backs and forths of these dunes, that has been my primary challenge with the dune desert. Not that I haven't enjoyed that challenge, uh, as I mentioned, because I, I really have enjoyed that challenge, but I can see why uh, they have flagged the Dune Desert as should not be picked by uh, new players, uh, because no, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. There's an impure coal node. Um, yeah, here's water down there. Um, so here's the edge of the map, and yes, it's it's high, but with the new Mark II pipes uh, or pumps, uh, even if it's a high cliff, it doesn't really matter. I suppose I could build the refinery here and bring the copper sheets back in through the same belt. That should not be a problem. Uh, in addition to that. I know that they've added more caves in the Dune Desert. I haven't really been exploring too much for them. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to mention about the Dune Desert is the um, the beach down here. Uh, because you basically have access to three nodes of Caterium. There. That's a Caterium node, I believe. Uh, we can check that very quickly. Uh, it's probably going to involve combat. But, meh. But I'm pretty sure that that's a Caterium node. It does look like an iron node, though. Nope. Has it? That's Caterium. For sure. Why does this look like an iron node? Hmm. So, yeah, I'm gonna tap this one as well. We can, uh... 
remove the rock right away. Boom. And there might be some residual noises. Because they've added some... Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. It's, that is really annoying. I don't know why they've added that. Um, so, Caterium. So that we get more uh, Caterium wire. As you've seen from the alternate recipes that I presented, we are going to need uh, a fair amount of Caterium wire. Um, let's just get back up to the desert floor and I will um, show you on the map. Uh, I did not... Some of the music transitions are also very bizarre after the update. I think they're tweaking that still. Um, because the music will just randomly change very, very rapidly like it just did. And it's like, huh? What just happened now? Um, it mostly seems to happen when you transition from one area of a zone to another zone area. What's up here? This is a peculiar place. There's a cave here. Oh, I can't get in there. Oh, well, I guess it's just decorative. I just want to find somewhere where I'm absolutely sure there's no spitter or other evil things. That looks like a mercer sphere. So that probably means that there's a spitter. Yeah, there's fluffy tailed hogs over there. I guess we can stand here. So, uh, on the map, I need to move this here. Can I not? Doesn't seem to want to uh, to show the map. Okay. Well, if it doesn't want to to um, should show this one. There we go. Sorry. My mistake. I was set to a different title of a Firefox Windows that fit Firefox window that was no longer present. Okay, so here we have the Dune Desert. Uh, if I upload my uh, my uh, current save game, We are. It's not the current save game, it was the save game that was done while I was in there. Now this is going to add a lot of lag, uh, because this is a lot of stuff that my browser has to deal with currently. So we have the Dune Desert here. I can zoom in one layer. But it's so slow, but that's fine. So if we go to the resource nodes, um, I can remove player and space elevator, and I can also remove uh, now the rest is fine. I don't think it will interfere. So you have pure nodes, iron. You can see that there's a lot of pure iron nodes here. I'm tapping several of them. The vehicles I can remove. Uh, but there's plenty of them untapped. As for copper, I'm now tapping these three. Um, there is another one somewhere. But I don't remember where it is. I was sure there was another one. Maybe there's just normal ones. Yeah, there's normal ones. So I'm tapping a normal one there. And a normal one there. Okay, but you can see there's there's plenty of, of normal copper nodes as well. I think there's a couple of impure ones, but I don't bother with the impures. Uh, Caterium. 
you have that one down there and you have that one up there and then you have one normal there and you have one normal there so you you with mark three miners you should be able to saturate um four full belts of um of caterium ore um and if you use the pure caterium uh, ingot recipe using the refineries uh you should be um uh perfectly capable of uh of um producing a lot of uh, of um, the wire without having to use long distance belts or uh, or uh, trains the trains are a bit wonky uh, so i'm not sure i would recommend using them currently except for the absolutely amazing coolness factor but that said um the drones this, these four nodes should be plenty to get you to the drones, so you could use the drones to transport Caterium from these other nodes, uh, no problem at all. Uh, so, yeah, the, the resource nodes are not a problem for the Dune Desert, you have plenty of resources. Water is a slight issue, uh, there are a couple of, of water wells actually. Uh, there's one down there, and there's one up here, and there's even one here, so you have, you have uh, three water wells water wells readily available i think that this lake might have some points where you can add water extractors uh up here on top of the waterfall you can definitely add water extractors and there should be a couple of points down here in the oasis as well where you can add water extractors but i think it's much i think it's basically so much fig fiddling that i would probably just go out here or down there rather that's the edge of the map so down here no that's not the edge of the, the edge of the map is here so down here and pipe it up uh i i think that is just easier even if you don't have the mark ii pumps you should still be able to to do that quite easily by uh by just using uh several pumps uh in a chain especially that's not too bad anymore when you have the um the uh uh, the visible rings that show you exactly how far the water travels. I don't know if they fixed that. There was a specific bug there that they actually they actually snap when you uh, chain them. But I don't. There there used to be a bug where if you put them at the snap point, it was actually a meter or so away from the actual. Uh, snap point you wanted to have it at. Uh, so be aware of that if you try to change things. For now, I think it's definitely time to wrap up this episode because this has been going on for 52 minutes and or 53 minutes and some of the points of doing it the way that I'm doing it was to not have these episodes be this long so I will endeavor to ensure that my episodes are not this long in the future. I do apologize for that. Now that I'm streaming there's no reason for me to make the episodes this long. So I will try to keep the episodes at 40 minutes or shorter. Um, maybe 45 minutes but definitely 40 minutes uh, or definitely 45 minutes should be the absolute max length for one of these episodes. So I do apologize for that. Uh, now I will be continuing to stream the factory probably every day. Uh, not 100% promise there, but I will. Uh, I will try. Um, and uh, uh, I will do. The, the necessary work on the factory to uh, to move on to the uh, next stages. Uh, so basically what's left to say for this specific episode is uh, I, um, I hope that you will uh, pop on over to uh, Twitch. Uh, I am known as Caledorn there as well. So it's twitch.tv slash Caledorn and uh, give me a follow there uh, if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel. Uh, that, that that's not something that I usually ask people. Um, I I'm not the kind of guy who says please like and subscribe. Uh, but in this specific case, when I'm just starting out, I will give myself the uh, the opportunity to do so. Um, uh, so yeah, I hope you will bear over with me for saying that. 
anyways, uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, uh, those are more than welcome. You can leave those in the uh, comment section of the video. Or you can come join us in the Discord server, in which you will also find the link for uh, under the video in the description section. Um, and uh, that should be it for this episode. So, thank you all so very much for joining me, and I will be seeing you all in either the streams or in the next episode. <laughs>